So conditions for tomorrow will be tolerable for mo many inland areas. I say all inland areas. We will have a maybe a couple rounds of rain bands coming in later in the afternoon. I'd say the main risk with that would be a spin-up tornado, maybe a quick burst of heavier rain, and some low-end wind gusts. For Wednesday, though, I'd put the gust scale in the high range. I'd put the flooding risk in the higher range as well. I'd keep tornado in the low range. I'm not saying gusts will be extreme. The definition of extreme winds would be 115 miles per hour. Uh, that's going to be harder to achieve in a broader sense. But many areas can certainly encounter times of steady tropical storm force winds. That would be between 39 and 73 miles per hour, especially closer to where the eye of the storm is and to the east of that. The general expectation is that the western side, typically speaking, in landfalling storms is a bit weaker. And we'll certainly see if that comes to pass in this case as well. But why the forecast cone was shifted a little bit east, some of the data is suggesting that there can be maybe a closer uh, landfall to the Oscilla River earlier this morning. And I don't like to point out necessarily exact points because they will fluctuate like we've seen today. Earlier it was saying more in the Steenhatchee River area. They do go back back and forth, and I think over the next 12 to 24 hours, we'll see a more defined spot, or a zone anyway, in the eastern Big Bend. So any little difference, 10, 15, 20 miles, can make a big difference depending on where your neighborhood is, especially if you are from Highway 319 to the east. So here's our typical forecast and focus. One of those rain bands set to kind of lift in well in advance of the system, so it's not going to come in during the day tomorrow, but we can see some residual rain passing through. Winds will be from the east, not incredibly strong, but they will start to increase, especially as we head into the nighttime hours and through the morning. Forecast and focus also pegs the Oscilla River area, Taylor County. That's going to be a, a prime area of concern for me, Taylor and to the east for the storm's direct effects, while north into the inland areas, it will start to diminish, but we will still have times of heavy rain, and that's going to be leading into the flooding risk and even some gusty winds that occur there. Let's put some numbers. These are forecast numbers of wind wind gusts, not sustained winds. The gusts are those quick little 10 second bursts that come and go uh, and, and, di and dip back into a lower level when it comes to sustained winds. So fairly manageable based on the data. The overall approach of the gustiest winds is kind of delayed in the latest run. So even right through sunrise on Wednesday, based on this, wind speeds are about 20 miles per hour or less. But when we start to see the approach of the system, that's where those offshore areas and coastlines will get in on stronger gusts. If this is the position of of the eye, we can see the stronger gusts a little more sustained uh, across the coastal bend. Even within the Tallahassee 319 corridor, those gusts can kick up to about 40, 50, or even higher, and then it all transfers towards the north as we go into the evening. Don't take that and run with it. There will be nudges, adjustments between now and then. But generally expect strongest winds for offshore areas. East wind can push up the storm surge across Franklin and Wakulla County. That's why you've had an upgrade to your storm surge warm Morning. Across Taylor County, this is uh, the, the suspected area of landfall and strongest push of onshore winds, 65 to 95. And the more south you go, the higher the storm surge can be. Could rival that storm of 1993, the water level there, uh, peaking at 11 feet of storm surge. This could maybe go above that if things come together just right at high tide. Inland Suwannee Valley, you'll see stronger wind gusts as well. Rainfall amounts will be pretty hefty and power outages will be widespread. Scattered to numerous in the south central Georgia region and across the uh, central portions, including the capital region, expect power to go out in numerous areas with sustained winds that can be upwards of 30 to 55 miles per hour.